of the day and sunny within the octave of the ascension. We're here again in New Jersey in the Augusta Spartan. And the epistle for this Sunday within the octave of the ascension, between ascension and Pentecost, is taken from St. Peter's first epistle, chapter 4. Dearly, dearly beloved, be prudent and watch in prayers. But before all things, have a constant mutual charity among yourselves, for mm -hmm. charity covereth a multitude of sins, using hospitality one towards another without murmuring. As every man hath received grace, ministering the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the words of God. If any minister, let him do it as of the power which God may administereth. That in all things God may be honored through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the gospel is taken with that according to St. John chapter 15. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, When the paraclete cometh, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceedeth from the Father, he shall give testimony of me, and you shall give testimony, because you are with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken to you, that you may not be scandalized. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the hour cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doth a service to God. And these things will they do to you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the hour shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Lord, Father, with all the most of men. Few considerations in these nine days, nine days of the preparation of the apostles between since Thursday a couple of days ago until Pentecost, a few days from now, when the Holy Ghost comes. Our Lord Jesus Christ prepared that in these nine days his holy apostles, prepared them for battle, prepared them to go out and to convert the world. But how there's one necessary part of preparation that can never be avoided, and that is the preparation of prayer. There has to be a communication and talking to God, and there has to be the Spirit of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, I have taught you during the last three and a half years the truth. In the time, the Holy Ghost, I will send to you. And the Holy Ghost shall descend in tongues of fire upon your head in due time. But there's something else also required. And they will spend these ten days, these nine days between Ascension Thursday and Pentecost Sunday, with the Blessed Virgin Mary in the upper room. And our Lord and St. Paul, St. Our Lord Jesus Christ told them, I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. But then, at, at ten days hence, after the resurrection, ten days after, after, the, after the ascension, so not many days hence, 55 days after he said these words, the Holy Ghost will come, the paraclete, who is the consoler. The consoler will come, and he will teach you the spirit of truth. You must remember that there is, that, that all things that come from God, says St. Bonaventure, they have three elements. There is a Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Not only a Father, not only a Son, not only the Holy Ghost, but all three elements. The Father is the Creator, the Son, the Redeemer, and the Holy Ghost, the Sanctifier. The Father creates and gives us the, the, the world in which we live. The, the Son sanctifies it and teaches us the truth. And then the Holy Ghost gives us the spirit of truth. And there must be a spirit of truth. And one of the challenges that, one of the great attacks of the devil is that he does, first of all, he gets people to believe lies. And the majority fall for his lies and live by the father of lies. But then some, however, don't believe the lies, and some don't fall for the father of lies in this way, and so they believe the truth. And they really believe the truth. But oh, they believe the truth, the spirit of truth is not in them. And this is the great danger of having the truth, that when we have the truth, we may have the truth, but not the spirit of truth. And the Lord Jesus Christ says, I will send you the spirit of truth. And what is the spirit of truth? Whenever you give an education to someone, there are several reasons to educate. One reason to educate is so that he might learn. Another reason to educate is so that he might do. And the Lord Jesus Christ, when he gave education, it was not for the purpose of learning, 
understanding, but for the purpose of doing. And therefore, and hence, the, the, the one who puts truth into practice, he cannot do it by only knowing these are what the rules are, fulfill them. There must be a spirit of the fulfillment of the rules. Our Lord Jesus Christ said that the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. And that's the spirit of the law and the spirit of the truth. And the Holy Ghost gives us the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth cannot be had without two things. Two absolutely essential things that must be in us in order to have the spirit of truth. And one of them is that we have to do works of charity. There must be a doing of the works of charity. And St. Peter gives the, says exactly what it is in the, in the, in the, in the epistle. St. Peter, the first Holy Father, the first Pope says, Dearly beloved, be prudent and watch in prayers. Watch in prayers. And we just pray in the night. Watch in prayers. Before all things, have a constant mutual charity among yourselves, where charity covers the multitude of sins, using hospitality one towards another without murmuring. It is necessary to practice hospitality. Hospitality is something which is part of the Catholic Church. It's also one of the absolutely essential things. When our Lord Jesus Christ spent 40 days in the desert and he fasted, what happened? The angels came and ministered to him. And what does that ministering say? What does in fact St. Augustine says, and St. Gregory the Great say, what is a minister? A minister is one who serves food at table. A minister is a waiter. And also one of the deacons, the seven deacons, they waited at the table. They were preparing their way for the priesthood. And, they, and when they came up with the first seven deacons, when St. Peter said, we need deacons to help us, that so we can go about and preach, they will prepare their way for the priesthood by serving at the table. There's something very sacred about hospitality, which is necessary to the supernatural life. And St. Peter himself says, there must be hospitality. There must be the doing of good without murmuring. And this doing of good without murmuring is the way in which we imitate God the Father. God the Father sends rain upon the just and upon the unjust. He sends grain into the field that we might the just and unjust may both eat. And we find in the lives of the saints that whenever the church is chesting, is this man a saint? He taught great things. He was very powerful. He condemned the bad guys. He condemned all the heretics. But what's the sign that he's a saint? And one of the key signs that the church is always looking for is hospitality. How does that man teach the poor that come to him in need? How did that man treat those who, whom he met in the streets? How did he treat his enemies? And the key is hospitality, hospitality, hospitality. Hospitality is something which is not secondary to the supernatural life. It is key to picking up the spirit of truth. So that when we have the truth, we will have the spirit of truth. Even in combat, it must be had. St. Paul, our Lord, says that by doing good, you put to silence evil men, the words of evil men, and that, and that those who do the works of charity to their enemies, they, if their enemies don't convert, they heap coals of fire upon the heads of their enemies, and they're going to have a greater suffering in hell and a greater punishment than they would have had otherwise. So hospitality is even the best way to get vengeance. If someone is the enemy of God and, and someone is not living according to the law of God, we must continue the work of hospitality. And St. Peter says it must be without murmuring. And one reason for this without murmuring is that God speaks in silence. God speaks in quiet. When we murmur, we make noise in our own hearts. When we're always frustrated, we're always angry, we're always uh, frustrated with other people, etc., even though there's always going to be evil in the world, there's always going to be bad, and there's always going to be troubles. Remember during these nine days, the whole world hated God. The whole world was against him, and the, the Jews had fir firmly rejected him. The Gentiles knew nothing about him and were living in the most wicked and evil life. And God had just given an instruction to the 12 apostles to go out and convert the whole world. What are they doing during these nine days? They're strengthening their hearts by the spirit of prayer. They're united with the Blessed Virgin Mary. They're in the upper room. And that spirit of prayer will create a quiet inside of the interior soul. There will not be murmuring. There must be a doing of good and a doing of good and doing of good. This is so essential. And the practical good that Christ speaks of is the good of feeding someone breakfast. 
feeding someone lunch, feeding the poor in the streets, feeding those that are around us, doing the works of hospitality, and that this helps us to attain the spirit of truth. And then the spirit of truth comes on Pentecost Sunday, and he says, he will teach you all the truth. And note this, says St. Augustine, Jesus Christ already taught the apostles the truth. There is no new truth. Anyone that believes that the Holy Ghost can come and teach us another doctrine than what's already contained in Scripture, or another doctrine already taught by Jesus Christ, is a liar and a heretic and a follower of the father of lies. The Holy Ghost cannot teach and will never teach a new doctrine. But he will teach you all the truth. And Lord Jesus Christ says, I have many things to tell you, he said on Thursday night, but you cannot bear them now. And that was his last night. Because there are things that are said with the mouth, and there are things that are said with the spirit. There are things that are said in the doctrine and written in the books, and there are things that are said that are inside the books, that give the books life. There are things that give the truth life, that make it fill up. You can see the outside of the balloon, and you can see its round shape, but you cannot see the air that fills it. That air is the spirit that makes it into a round and hot air balloon that's able to fly in the sky. We can see the outside elements. We can see whether there's holes or there's no holes. But the spirit is that which is inside and gives it life. And this spirit will never be outside the balloon. The spirit will never be outside of it. So that the spirit of truth can never be outside the truth. And then when the Holy Ghost teaches us the truth, he cannot teach us something that Jesus Christ has not already taught us. He can't teach us something the church has not already taught or the saints have not already instructed. But what he can do is give the spirit of truth, make that truth fill up, make that truth expand, make that truth have life, make that truth go out into the world and be carried to the ends of the earth. And this the spirit of truth. And so St. Peter says, don't murmur. We do hospitality one towards another. And remember that all of us have many sins. Everyone has sins except the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph and our Lord Jesus Christ in his humanity. Everyone else has sins. And the fact is that they, these sins are terrible and they must so be sorry for them. But remember that it's charity that covereth a multitude of sins. And the great example of that is St. Mary Magdalene. What did she do when her sins were forgiven? She went into the upper room. She went to the room where Christ was. She wept upon his feet and she cleaned his feet that were not cleaned with her tears. And because she cleaned the feet with her tears and because she loved much, all of her pride and all of her impurity and all of her other sins were completely wiped out. And hence the Lord Jesus Christ said of her, she has been forgiven because she has loved much. And then St. Peter says in his epistle, that if you want to be forgiven, if we want to be forgiven, we must also love much. And that we, we, we each of us have sins in us, but they must be forgiven by loving much. And we can't learn how to do that without the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth cannot be attained without silence and prayer. It's necessary to talk to God. Necessary to speak to God in the night. Necessary to speak to God when we are traveling. Necessary to speak to God when we are alone. Necessary to consider the things of God over and over again. That's why in the wisdom of the church, crucifixion happens every Good Friday. Resurrection happens every Easter Sunday. Pentecost is always 50 days after Easter like it was the very first time. The ascension is always 40 days as it was the very first time. And we go through the life of Christ and 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 the life of Christ, and we never learn something new. We never learn something we didn't learn the first time when we were seven years old. But what we do learn is the spirit of truth, which fills that truth. There's a deepening of that truth, and it is supposed to enter into our hearts. And this cannot be done without continuing in prayer. And St. Peter says, continually in prayer. That doesn't mean saying only vocal prayers, which we must do. Say the rosary, say the morning prayers, say the night prayers, go to mass, fulfill the, the requirements of the church as much as we can in our crisis. But it means that we must be have a spirit of talking to God, a spirit of looking at God, a spirit of being with our Lord. This is what we have to do. There has to be a spirit of prayer. We want to ask for that spirit of prayer to enter inside of us during this sacred time these nine days, when the apostles received their spirit of prayer, 
They received the spirit of prayer during these nine days. And then on the tenth day, when the Holy Ghost came down, he descended in tongues of fire upon the holy apostles and on the Blessed Virgin Mary. And he descended in the, holy apostles, the tongues of fire on the holy apostles in order that they might carry the fire of divine truth into the world. And to remind us, yes, we must believe the truth. Yes, we must teach the truth. Yes, we must condemn all errors and heresies and the errors and heresies of modernism and Vatican II and all the evils of the world today. And yet, But we must have the spirit of truth inside of us. And we pray for that spirit of truth to enter us, which can only be had by watching continually in the night, by speaking with our Lord Jesus Christ, by spending time with him, and then by putting that time into practice. For some say, the quietest heretics say, as long as you spiritually pray, you don't have to do good works. They take that like a version of kind of Protestantism. But no, we must do the good works, and we must have the spirit of prayer, and we must believe the truth. There must be a trinity of our supernatural life. And so when we pray for that trinity of supernatural life to enter into us, and during this holy time of the ascension, in any case, we're going to be late today, so we'll close it at that. And, and, and God bless you all, that in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.